I get around. Is it true that y'all used that song as a template? Well, it was a song that was so emphatic, that was so uh, across the board, so in your face, so boy meet girl, so corner boys love it, so uh, the ladies loved it. Um, it was a hit. So why not try to figure out how to get something like that for your artist because you're about to come and this is what you have to compete up against. A record as huge as that in, in artistic merit as well as sales at this point. The video was fun. Who didn't want to be in that mix? Who didn't want to have that lifestyle? Who didn't want to, to live that life? So when you're setting an artist up, you're presenting their lifestyle. Tupac was a master of that, a master of marketing, editing, brevity. He can get the point across. I get around. Yeah, that's a cool record. And, and so in listening to it, we had to ape. We had to figure out how to match better or surpass records like that. When you think about The Chronic, come on. The Chronic was a, is, is a masterpiece. Shout out to Dr. Dre. Uh, when we heard that, it was like mind blowing. And okay, now let's go back to the drawing board. Let's rethink some things. And that was the best thing about Sean during those days. He, uh, he, he was in it, he was about it, and he was thinking about what was next. He wasn't standing in the past. Right, so what was y'all reaction when y'all first heard I Get Around for the first time? Like, what was the conversation like between you and Diddy when y'all first heard I Get Around? Well, hearing it was like it was monumental. Uh, it was like the song that you bent your ear in to hear out of all the other songs on the radio. There was other hits and stuff, but that one stood out. And so it was like, he's that dude. And then his career was the way it was. It was fortunate that Biggie and him got to know each other as friends and took a liking to each other, that helped with the launch of Bad Boy in a lot of different ways that was unexpected. Uh, the friendship or the kinship based on them being artists led to Tupac hosting the West Coast launch of Bad Boy, an independent East Coast company with one artist starting to break on the East that we want to stretch as far across the nation as we can. And we have a superstar pop hip hop artist that is gracious in giving us that hand and giving us that bridge to LA. He hosted the party at Prince's former club called Glam Slam. That was a big thing to do, number one club, kind of exclusive. So we went out there and we showed out and uh, he did the job, hosted it, brought Biggie out, performed with Biggie. They were uh, even recording before then and recording ever since after then. During that trip when we were out there, Biggie had a hotel room. Pac let him stay with him at his house. Barbecue, steaks, that type of thing. He was that type of a dude in that way, real, soulful. And him and Biggie had a great relationship uh, up until. Like, out of nowhere, you could be working in one direction on a record, and next thing you know, you're riding down the street and you hear something on the radio, next thing you know, you're making a sharp left. You're going back to the studio, back to the drawing board. I Get Around was one of those records. What you try to achieve in creating a record that's supposed to be for airplay or mass consumption, a one, two, three word hook, something that everyone can relate to, something that gets boy and girl to connect on the dance floor or just in the general world of, of hanging and chilling so that you could be a part of the soundtrack of the youth culture's uh, movement, their lives in this era, so, or that, whatever era you're putting the records out. Tupac had that. Brenda had a baby, uh, Dear Mama, uh, and then I Get Around. It's like, that's like a, a, a social conscious record that he was able to do and had that on radio and make that into a massive hit. Then he was able to do uh, another record with soul and heart that went straight to the women with the mother's Dear Mama. And then he did one for the corner boys and all the cool guys. This is how you play. I get around. It fit him. It was a movie. It was what we needed to see to know, okay, Biggie, he's a player too. Do you understand? Bring out that player aspect. 
bring out that player, that player uh, 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 mantra so that people can see I'm just not in the street, you know, churning drugs and hand to hand. You understand? I'm getting jiggy with it. I can get the party started. I'm in the hot tub with my girl and all of her friends. <laughs> you understand? I play. I Get Around showed you that you could be gangster and you could be a player too at the same time and you can have all of that. Now there might have been other songs that kind of intimated that and it might have been some Big Daddy Kane, but it's such a different era, it didn't hit those people. He gave me gangster without all the guns, but also player. He gave me player too. Tough, but player. Cool G Rap didn't give me that like too much of the player aspect. He gave me gangster, he gave me tough. Then you got Biggie putting both of those two things together. Sort of like the way Tupac did it in his way, but Tupac had the Hollywood image and all of that working in his favor and going with him. That creative, artsy, uh, uh, poetic type of person. Biggie had the street poetic justice thing going and he didn't have all of the other trapments, but he made up for it just with his whole swagger. And yes, that helped for him to bring his swagger to the table. We had Party and Bullshit as one of the first records that we did on Biggie. We were trying to find ourselves with that record. Party and Bullshit. That was the first release. It really didn't, you know, it didn't do what we wanted it to do. It wasn't that it was a terrible record, but it didn't, it didn't put Biggie in a frame that people see him in now. When you listen to Party and Bullshit, you hear Biggie and you'll love him for the things that he's saying, but if you didn't hear anything else by him since that, that wasn't the biggie that we needed to have out there in the world. And songs that came after that song helped us to shape and give us the biggie that, that we needed to have. Soulful, player, swaggerful, wordplay.